Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the What's New in Zimbra webinar today. Uh, my name is Andrew Shingler. Uh, I'm a senior SE with Zimbra. And what I intend to do uh, in this session is basically go through uh, some of the new innovations that we've had in Zimbra over the, 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 uh, the last sort of 18 months or so. So each webinar we're going to focus on a particular topic. And today's topic is uh, around the Zimbra Docs uh, application. So it'll only be around about sort of 10, 15 minutes long, uh, where I'll give you sort of the high level uh, overview of Zimbra Docs and how you can get started uh, with this new application within the Zimbra collaboration suite. If you do have any questions, uh, there is a Q&A panel. So please feel free to put questions in there. Uh, I will. Uh, answer those questions at the end of the session. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through the slides uh, and present uh, the session first, and then we'll try and address any questions that come up during the session itself. So it's, uh, it's the top of the hour. So we may as well make a start. And Zimba Docs uh, is an application that we brought uh, into the product line uh, in the version 8.8.9. .8 so that was around about the um, October 2018 uh, timeframe. And it's essentially at no additional cost. So it's, it's part of the Zimbra Collaboration Network Edition. Uh, so you need to be uh, mindful of the fact that it's, uh, it's not available in the open source. It's only in the Network Edition. And it essentially allows users to create and collaborate uh, around documents, uh, creating spreadsheets, presentations, uh, right from within inside the Zimbra web client. And the docs feature is actually based on uh, a LibreOffice uh, that we've, uh, we've customized. So it's using a LibreOffice engine within there. And you access your documents directly from the briefcase tab. So those familiar with the briefcase uh, system means that you can share those uh, briefcase folders with other users uh, that you're collaborating with. So there are three applications within there. The first one is uh, the Zimbra Docs Writer. So this is essentially a, a word processor. So uh, it allows you to create and edit text documents directly from within, you, within the browser. So one of the key benefits of this is that it's it doesn't require any dedicated desktop software to be installed uh, on your laptop or your desktop to be able to edit it, because it, it is actually all happening uh, within the server. So there's no requirement for any kind of Office product to be installed on, on the desktop itself. And it allows for collaborative editing as well. So several people uh, can work on that document at the same time. They can see the changes happening real time uh, as those users are participating uh, in the collaborative process uh, of generating the document. The actual editor itself, it's a fully fledged editor. So you get all the sort of capabilities that you would expect uh, of any sort of um, word processing uh, application that you would see in the market today. So it has all the sort of functions and features uh, that you would expect of that uh, document editing uh, type of uh, process. It also keeps a version history. So as, you, as you're making changes, it's automatically saving those changes as, you're, as the users are editing the document itself. But it also creates uh, a version history. So if at any point in time uh, you do feel that you need to revert back or you want to undo some of the, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the edits that have been put in place, you can always roll back to previous versions within there. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of that whole collaborative process where you're having a number of different users are editing the documents uh, within their web clients. And you can then always track what's being done and make any changes or, or revert back to previous versions uh, if, if that's necessary. So the other thing is, obviously, in terms of file types, uh, what type of file types can it work with? So it works with all the sort of popular file types available uh, in the market today. So you can import your documents uh, directly into the briefcase, uh, and it makes them instantly editable. And that also includes Microsoft Word files. And then similarly, you can actually export uh, your documents in different formats as well. So there's the 
the native uh, ODT uh, file format, which is the LibreOffice format. Uh, there's also PDF version you can export your documents to. Uh, there's a couple of different versions of Word uh, that you can export documents to, and also rich text. So again, it's giving you that flexibility that in terms of Collaborate, collaborating, sharing, sending those documents out to you know other organizations or other users, then you can uh, post them in formats that are available to those users as well. So the second uh, application that's within Zimbra Docs is a Zimbra Calc. Uh, so this is a spreadsheet uh, application. So again, it's really allowing the end users to work directly within the browser. You can see from the screenshot there, all of these applications essentially open up a, a new tab uh, within the Zimbra web client where they can go ahead and edit and they can see uh, the edits that are being made by the other users that they're collaborating with. And again, you've got the version history uh, that allows them to sort of roll back uh, to previous versions or undo any edits that have been made. And uh, again, the key thing here is the fact that you're not required to have any desktop application here to, to do this. It's really about being able to enable your users, whether they're you know, on, a, on a, a regular desktop or if they've just got access to a web browser where they can make changes, edit, and collaborate uh, around these, uh, these documents. So again, in terms of formats that are supported, uh, we can import uh, and export into Microsoft Excel formats, as well as uh, open standards formats and also PDF documents as well. So in again, in terms of actually sharing those documents out, if you've got certain users that don't have an application or don't have an application available to them to be able to view uh, view the the document that you've created, you can always export into a PDF document type and send that as a as an attachment. And then the third uh, application is. Zimbra Docs Impress. So Impress is about creating presentations. So again, you can edit and polish those uh, presentations directly from within the browser. You can collaborate in the same way that you can with the Calc application and the Writer application. So several users can be working on the same document at the same time. Uh, and you can you know, create those presentations directly from within the web client and then obviously upload and download uh, in the various formats uh, available within the application itself. One of the nice features that you'll see within uh, the presentation uh, application is the fact that you can actually present directly from your inbox. So you might be in a scenario where you don't have access to your own uh, laptop, you know, when you're on the go, you might be able to get to your web client through someone else's browser, but then from within there, because you've got uh, Zimbra Docs installed, you could open and then present your slides directly from uh, the Zimbra web client itself. So it's a nice, a nice feature, and it's it's a very useful feature for people that you know are on the go and moving around and don't necessarily uh, have access to you know all their sort of uh, uh, applications on the desktop and lap laptop itself. So they're, they're the three applications that are embedded within Zimbra Docs. So the thing now is we need to understand is, well, how do we actually get started with using Zimbra Docs? As I say, we, we delivered Zimbra Docs as an add-on application to the Zimbra Network Edition in version 8.8.9. So first of all, you would need to be running uh, 8.8.9 or above, uh, any of those versions above 8.8.9. The Docs server itself, uh, so there is a, there's a, a separate component, a, a Docs server that needs to be installed on its own dedicated node, so a dedicated virtual machine or physical server. Now that can either be uh, an Ubuntu uh, version or it can be a Red Hat version of, of Linux running that. So it, 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 a relatively small uh, system that you need to run, but it needs to be a dedicated uh, system on there. If you've got larger environments, then you can scale that up horizontally by having additional doc servers so that you can service the requests of you know, large populations of users within there. The actual extension 
for docs is already contained within the NG modules uh, of the Zimra collaboration server. Uh, so you don't need to worry about having, you know, adding any extra component onto the, uh, the Zimbra side of things because that extension is already there. But one thing that you do need to do is actually deploy uh, the Zimbra doc Zimlet. So that can be that can, can be downloaded from the repository. It's a very simple process. Uh, you can see there, you know, on an Ubuntu, you can literally just run app get install Zimbra docs, uh, and it will download it from the repository. Then, in terms of enabling your users, it's using the classic model that, that we have within Zimbra. So you enable it within the class of service, or you enable enable it at a end user level. So they just essentially need to have the Zimlet uh, deployed within uh, their web interface. So the administrator can provision those users through the various techniques that are within uh, the uh, the Zimbra collaboration server. There's uh, documentation available. Uh, so if you go to the standard uh, admin uh, guide within Zimbra, there is a section around Zimbra docs. It will explain a bit more about the architecture uh, and how you deploy the service itself, and then also give you a bit more insight into the features and functionality. So. If, you, if you're interested in looking a bit more into Zimbra Docs, then please feel free to reach out to your reseller or you can contact us directly uh, at Zimbra. And also, uh, there's quite a lot of information on the website. I say the admin guide gives you uh, quite a bit of insights into actually getting uh, a service up and running and installed. So, I hope you found that interesting and you know I've highlighted some of the features within there as I say what we do want to do is probably run some more uh, webinars like this just very short ones where we focus on some of the uh, additional capabilities that we've added into Zimbra over the last uh, year or 18, 18 months uh, so there are a couple of questions uh, that I'm that I've seen come in on the Q&A. Uh, one is uh, which LibreOffice version is based on the Zimlet? So, so I mean, the Zimlet itself is actually, we developed the Zimlet uh, ourselves. The LibreOffice kit, uh, I'm not sure exactly what version uh, it's been developed on, but it, it is quite a customized version of LibreOffice that we're using. And obviously, as new versions come out, uh, we can update whatever that engine version is. So I can essentially, yeah, I can, I can have a look into that and get back to you in terms of exactly what version it is. But obviously, going forward, we want to keep uh, keep up to date with whatever the latest version of LibreOffice uh, is available. Uh, see, there's a second question: How many users are already using Zimbra Docs? Uh, it's well, I mean, it's a difficult question to answer because we don't necessarily know our, our user base. I mean, I certainly know that we use it internally ourselves. Uh, we also have a number of customers that have evaluated it and have deployed it, deployed it in their environments. Um, in terms of scale, I'm not, I, I, I don't know the, the answer to that, but uh, it's, it's a relatively new feature. I, know, I certainly know from the work that I do that there's quite a few people that are looking at the technology and looking at the, the application itself. So it is available. It, it, it is a fully GA product uh, within there. Uh, there's a question there. are you resharing the source code the customizations made to LibreOffice uh, I'd need to check with the development team I, d I don't know what we're doing in terms of resharing that out uh, I guess under any rules or uh, open source rules you know if, if we're required to do any resharing then we, we might be doing that but I'm happy to sort of follow up on that question so there aren't any more questions, so I think we're kind of 15 minutes, uh, which is about what we estimated that this session would be. So I'm really glad that you've managed to join. We will be posting uh, the video on our YouTube, so for any users that uh, uh, didn't manage to make it today, it will be available on our YouTube website. So um, thank you for attending today and look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.